young site in Arizona, standing here talking to Ed Head. This is Elise Bennett here with us. And uh, Ed, what do you do here at Gun Site? Well, I'm a range master. I've been teaching here for, uh, gosh, 20 something years. Spent five and a half years as the operations manager and ran the school. Now I just do part time like most of our instructors. And what does Gun Site do? Well, we train good people in defensive skills so that they can protect themselves, their families, their communities. This is a fighting school. We teach people how to fight. It's not for sport shooting, this is a fighting school, and we do it with pistol, carbine, shotgun, rifle, we do hunting courses as well. How many people do they run through here a year, do you know? You know, it's only, you know, it, mo most years it's only uh, a little under 2,000. Yeah. Yeah, about 2,000 people a year. But do you have people here that, advanced shooters, you have people just starting out, right? Absolutely, we have beginning shooters, and we have people that are very experienced. Elise, for example, is a, is a friend of mine, and this is her first formal uh, firearms training. Right? Yes. Yes, it is. So, yeah, we have people like her all the time and, and uh, other people that are interested in learning these skills. How many instructors do you have here? There's about 60 instructors. Most of them are uh, part-time uh -huh. in that nobody really works here full-time except the office staff. Uh -huh. The instructors come in here and teach for a couple of weeks at a time and uh -huh. then go back to their jobs in police, military, whatever it is they do. Uh -huh. Then there's guys like me who are retired. I'm a retired Border Patrol agent. And uh, I live near here, so uh, I teach fairly often. And uh, I also come up here and do things like test guns that I'm writing about and that kind of thing. I've been coming here for years, and every time I come here, I learn something, you know, to help me, help me better fight with my gun. You know, they, it's not just necessarily a shooting school. They teach you how to fight with the weapon you have. And it's a lot about attitude and mindset as it much is about equipment. Um, and the instructors here, you know, you go to a lot of schools around the country and it's all about the instructor. It's not that here. The guys, they don't have neck tattoos and all this crap. You know, they're here and they know what they're doing. They've been there. They've done that. They want to teach you how to fight with your weapon. That's it. For us, it's all about the students. It's all about the students. I feel as an instructor, if I can take a, a talented individual with, with good motor skills and eyesight and so forth and teach them to be a better shooter than I am, I've achieved my goal. I'm not competing with my right. students. I'm trying to better them. Sure. You want them when they leave here to be able to survive and come back again, right? Because you Absolutely. don't know what's out there. There's a lot of mean people out there. There are. You know, we've had, we have we like to say gun sight's the safest place on earth, but we've had people get into uh, serious <laughs> situations 15 minutes after they leave here. Yeah. You never know. So you should come here and stay. Just stay up in the campsite right. and stay, right? That's it. This is the safest place right. on the planet. Now, what's the website? Uh, gunsite.com, www.gunsite, it's G-U-N-S-I-T-E.com. All right, thanks, Ed. Thanks, Elise. Um, this is probably the most important thing we do at Gunsite. Uh, people would ask Colonel Cooper, so you have a shooting school? And he'd say, among other things, because this is the other thing, and some of the other things we do as well. So um, having, the, having the shooting skills, having the uh, gun handling and... Uh, marksmanship skills is one thing, but being in the proper state of mind is even more important. And this says a guide to gunfight survival. I'd rather think of it uh, because we're not necessarily going to get in a gunfight, we're going to avoid gunfights, but I'd rather think of it as developing a defensive mindset and developing a defensive state of mind that keeps you out of these kinds of things. Um, in the early days of my Border Patrol career, uh, things were pretty wild and nasty down on the border. And uh, without going into a lot of details, I got into a lot of pretty serious scrapes during that period of time. There were very, very few of us, and there were gazillions of people running around, and oftentimes you'd be out there by yourself, supposedly trying to control a mile or two of border. Uh, all kinds of things would happen. Well, after I came here to Gunsight the first time uh, in 1988 and learned this, and then continued with my training at Gunsight, uh, I was never in a shooting again after that. Not one. Pulled guns on a lot of people, beat up a lot of people, did a lot of that kind of stuff, but I was never again in another shooting. Because I learned from this how to command my environment and how to control the situations I was in. And having the shooting skills and then having the right mindset allowed me to be ahead of these people and allowed me to see what was going to happen, stop it before it started, and command the environment and maintain control. And that's what this is all about. I like to tell folks that if you can control yourself, your emotions, and your weapon system, and know you can do that, you have the ability to command your environment.
All the rest of this stuff, what have I got to be afraid of? I'm armed, I'm alert, I'm awake. What do I have to be afraid of? Nothing. And you ought to feel the same way. And that comes from your training and being in the right defensive mindset. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit here, okay? And, and for those of you especially, first thing we have to do, and I, I, I don't have too much trouble convincing people who come to Gunsight that they have to be aware that the world can be a dangerous place. That's why most of them are here. But it starts with awareness. You need to be aware that the world is a dangerous place, and there might just be people and things out there that are going to be dangerous to you that you might have to deal with. And just having that awareness to begin with is the first huge step that gets you on the path to having a defensive mindset and being able to control these situations. We, um, we see all these uh, church shootings. We just had the synagogue one in Pittsburgh. Uh, I've worked with Rob's uh, security team, and I've, uh, he's done a lot of work on developing how this stuff should be put together for a church. And I've done some classes uh, in a couple of places for folks uh, training their church security teams. I've got a PowerPoint presentation on that that I put together. But the biggest thing you have to work on with these folks, these good people, these good religious people, whether they be Jewish, Christian, or whatever, is they need to be aware that the world's a dangerous place and there might be people that want to come after them. And it's all about self-control. Again, if you can control yourself, your emotions, and your weapon system, for the teeny tiny moment in time it takes you to solve your problem, you have the ability to command your environment. I used to express it like this, like, a, you know, big, everything comes to a point right here, and right here is the crisis. And this is everything you are, everything you know, everything you've learned, all of your training, all of your skills, your entire history comes to that point right there. And unless you can get past that crisis, you can't have what follows, which is the rest of your life. You've got to be able to get past that point. And what you're doing is you're mentally rehearsing your response to different situations and you're making decisions in advance. So when it does happen, you don't have to think about it anymore. You should do things like with your family. What are we going to do if we're sitting here and the door gets kicked in? What are we going to do if it's the middle of the night and the house is on fire? How do we get out? How do we get the kids out? How do we get the dog out? Whatever. All those things should be decided in advance. Because in the middle of the crisis is a really bad time to try to figure out what to do. It's a whole lot better if you've made these decisions in advance and anticipated these things and understand how to handle them. They do. The best response to a violent attack is an immediate, explosive, overwhelmingly violent counterattack. Theodore Roosevelt told us, never hit a man, but if you must, put him to sleep. Inside, there's two first aid kits. The white one with the red cross is for average every day. You get little abrasions, help yourself. The red one is the trauma kit. In the back of my truck on the left-hand side, there is another trauma kit, okay? Uh, my truck's the uh, F-250 down there with the torno cover open, left side red kit. We're not going to need those things, but just in case, Grab both of them if we call for them. I prefer mine over that one there. Absolutely no gun handling back behind the line. There will be an exception. At the fiddle table, uh, when we're swapping out guns, get our attention that you want to go swap out a gun. We'll give you uh, the blessing to go forward. When you're swapping these things out... You get balanced on both feet about shoulder width apart. If you're not balanced, you can't pick up either foot at any time. If you're doing this and loading all your weight onto one leg, you have to unload that before you can move. So we want to be balanced. The toes directed towards the threat. Why do we want to do that? Because the more you blade, the more you open your hips, and the more you turn, the more easily you are unable to, uh, you're knocked off balance and unable to control force or recoil coming back at you. This is especially true when we're doing things like shooting a rifle or a shotgun. The more we do this, the more it does that. And the same thing is true with pistols. So we want to have our weight behind the gun. We want to bend our knees a little bit. We want to get your chest ahead of your belt buckle. So you're leaning into the gun a little bit. Not a 
crouch. You don't need to do that, but just kind of get into the gun a little bit. Don't just stand up here with your legs longer and you let gravity drop those in there for you. And you can turn it with your thumb. When you close the cylinder, lock it, and then go ahead and holster, okay? All right, all you semi-automatic people. Okay, we're going to fire one round at a time, one round at a time on my command. One round in the center mass of your target. Stand by. Fire. Back down to low ready. Look around, see if there's anybody else that needs shot. Eye muzzle target. The head and the cart and the gun move together. You're like a turret. Low ready. Bring a magazine to the pistol. Insert it over the top of the slide. Rack it hard. You'll press check if you want to and see if there's a round in the chamber. Do a tactical reload if you wish. When you do a tactical reload to top the gun off, bring the spare magazine out. Fingers go over the top. Take the other magazine out. This one goes in. That other magazine goes in your pocket. Now you'll have the gun up to full capacity. Stand by. Fire. Back down to low ready. Look around, look around. Is anybody else worth shooting? Okay. One round. Stand by. Fire. Easy. I'm not sure you're Luke. What you're doing is you're throwing your finger off the trigger as soon as you shoot. When you get that shot, and that shot breaks, get back down in your sight. Just relax it out. One round. Stand by. Fire. Don't be in a hurry to throw your guns down, guys. Get another sight picture. One round. Stand by. Fire. Get ready, throw your finger off the trigger. Back down a little ready, finger straight, look around, look around. trigger until you decide to come down off the target. Once you come down One off round, the target, stand by. Straight. Okay. Fire! Yeah. Oh. I did it again. Okay, you did it again, because what you're going to do is Back you're down always ready, look through around. for another sight picture. Mm -hmm. That's front. Last one, front last sight, one. Press, stand by. Another sight picture. Fire! Okay, back down, look around, look around, reload your pistol.